I took the elevator in my office to the ground floor, like I do every day. It's a large building, with my office being on the twelfth floor. So walking up and down just doesn't seem appealing to a man of my stamina. Usually the elevator is slow, making a few stops along the way. But what bothers me more is the fact that the elevator always seems to evade me going all the way up or down, opposite of where I am, just before I press the call button. Yesterday, I was in the elevator with around five people who had to get out on the way down. The last person got out on the fifth floor, leaving me alone in the elevator. However, instead of continuing to go down, the elevator suddenly started going up. Great, I thought. I must have forgotten to press the ground floor button and now I have to go up again. The elevator stopped shortly after. But I was greeted with an unfamiliar sight. A vast, empty space of rooms, with dilapidated white walls, old neon lights, and a concrete floor with cracks in places. I thought this must have been some unused office floor, which was under renovation or construction. As I stepped forward to check where I was, the elevator closed behind me. I was left alone on the floor. There was no way I would wait for it to come back again. I decided to find the staircase and make my way down. The room seemed to be expanding in various directions, so I took the one on the left, since it felt more natural to me. I passed through one room, then two, then three, and then it hit me. Something which made my dread rise like boiling water. The rooms continued expanding in all directions. Since I was going left, and the elevator was very close to the front of the building, I should have ran into a wall by now. But there was none. Not even windows. Panicking, I made a dash back to where I came from, but it was impossible to find my way around this maze. Hello! I shouted with a cracked voice. Is anybody here? All that followed was the buzzing of the neon lights. But then I heard something else. I steadied my breathing and heard what sounded like footsteps upon the concrete floor, echoing somewhere close to me. Hello? Who's there? Please, I need help! The footsteps sounded like they were getting closer, but due to the echo it was impossible to tell where they were coming from. A flood of relief washed over me as I realized I wasn't alone here. Hey! I'm right in here, buddy! I shouted. Thank God! I thought I was going to be lost here forever! My phone suddenly vibrated. I pulled it out, scolding myself for not using it earlier. There was a text message from an unknown number. It said, Stay away from them. The footsteps that were slow and deliberate earlier now turned into a frantic sprint. I didn't wait to see who or what was there, but the sudden feeling of being caught by something predatory made me run faster than I ever thought imaginable. I didn't care where I was running, I just ran through room after room, praying to every god that exists to grant me freedom or a quick death. While those footsteps kept following me the whole time, never closer, never more distant. My chest and legs were burning, but the fear and adrenaline prevented me from stopping. And then, as if on cue, I suddenly saw an elevator in front of me. It opened as I was running forward, and in that panicked moment, something in the back of my mind told me that this one could lead to an even worse place. But I didn't care. I could hear the thing behind me closing in, and I ran into the elevator so quickly that I practically rammed the wall of it and collapsed to the floor. Just as the doors of the elevator started closing, I heard a blood-curdled scream, impossible to be made by any human or animal alive, before it bumped into the closed elevator doors with such force that the whole elevator shook. I didn't even need to press the button before the elevator started descending, and I heard one final short screech of whatever was on that floor echoing around the elevator before it became completely silent. And then the elevator stopped, and the distinctive ding of the door's opening sounded itself. 
Let's take the stairs. Two women stood in front of the elevator, looking at me in disgust. Before I could process what was going on, they were gone and the doors of the elevator started closing again. I scrambled, forcing my hand through the gap, making the doors open again. At the bewilderment of everyone in the building, I ran out of there as fast as I could, happy to feel the fresh air on my face again. I'm glad I didn't turn around to face what was chasing me. Something tells me, if I did, I would have been so petrified with fear that it would have been able to catch up and tear me to pieces instantly. I haven't used an elevator since then. Twelfth floor or not, I walk up to my office and everywhere else.